Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, Seth Rollins returns. Braun Breaker confronts Gunther. NXT debuts on the CW and crowns a new champ. We got the Mr. McMahon Netflix doc. We're going to talk about it a little bit. We're, we're going to talk about it more next week with Zach. Uh, Will Ospreay and Ricochet. Brian Danielson versus Okada and your bad blood predictions. That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. Well, I don't know. I got a lot of stuff to say about that. That's the man. Never mind. Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Marks. So welcome to the Band from Ringside podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Veggie, a.k.a. J.D. Vance McMahon. <laughs> and sitting directly across from me, Still we right. have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all the ages, BFR proudly presents to you your favorite podcast, Tag Team Champions of the World, the ABM JCB, the badass Bill Veggie, the natural born Beefers. And on that lovely note, I'll ask the congregation to bow their heads as I read from the latest edition of the Band from Ringside podcast, volume 380, chapter 3, verse 14, and the good smart saith, hashtag boo the heels, it's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat, the holy trinity of BFR, the man is right. We got a lot to talk about, we got plenty to discuss, and got predictions on the back end. So we are coming at you from beautiful St. Charles, Missouri. No Zach tonight, no Vice tonight. Uh, I want to thank Murray the Murray Man Murray for being on the back burner in case I wasn't going to be able to make it tonight. And you know what? We should probably have Murray on sometime soon. It has been too long. It would hey, it would be nice to check in with Murray. So uh, let's keep that in mind for next time. But thank you, Murray, for always being ready. A B R. As <laughs> Jason said, tons of stuff to talk about tonight. I appreciate the bo- boys holding down the fort. Last week, um, I forget what I was doing. Oh, no, my band uh, was recording. We were in the. How was that? It was good. We are going to record a new EP. Uh, we finally have a band name. The band name, <laughs> uh, it could be construed as a wrestling name. We are called Heater now. So. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of, a lot of discussion about what the new band was going to be called. It's a lot of guys that used to play, uh, in my old band, the Hibernauts. Of course, nice. uh, we lost a good friend of ours who played great friend of ours, who, uh, a brother to us really, yes. who played, uh, uh, played in band with us, played in the band with me and the other guys and played softball with Jason and was Jason's friend and bartender and, uh, you know fellow drinker for many many years jack stevens so we we've kind of gotten back together and we're having some fun so uh heater expect that uh expect that record out sometime soon uh but i'd say without further ado let's get to that three count shall we one two three jcb kick it off um i'm gonna go in the spirit of old BFR as the one count as the most important thing that happened in the world of wrestling. And for me, as much as I love what is happening in WWE with the great storylines and great matches, to me, having them be so great is partly due because of competition. And competition breeds, uh, I guess, success in some form or fashion, success or failure. Long story short, we're going to talk about AEW, uh, getting a five-year renewal on their deal. Um, I believe it's in five years in the neighborhood of, depending on where you look at, 150 to $185 million. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to stay on TBS and TNT with uh, Collision and Ramp, I'm sorry, Collision and Dynamite. Their streaming service all going to Max starting in January of 2025. That's going with the backlog and uh, pay-per-views going forward. So, obviously... That was my question. So, pay-per-views going forward are going to be live broadcast on HBO Max or just on Max? If I'm not mistaken, Thriller, I know for sure, is a... is. Where Wrestle Dream, it, if you're going to watch Wrestle Dream on pay per view, Thriller is an option. 
going towards the rest of the year. I would have to double check it to make sure, but if I'm not mistaken, starting in 2025, Max should be an option. Thriller TV should be another option, so on and so forth. I mean, that's huge for me. It's huge. Well, I mean, just, and I'm not the the financial guy, obviously, we're missing him this week. Yeah, we're missing him. Um, Just the knee-jerk reaction, it it gives more legitimacy if you – if you're like me and you never thought that AEW was going to die right away or you were hoping for their demise, this just gives them more legitimacy t- to at least say they are competition. I won't say they're a rival for WWE. They've only been doing this for the longest, not even as long as we've been doing the podcast, okay? That's how long they've been doing it. Our podcast has been going longer than AEW. There have been less dynamites than there have been BFR. <laughs> okay, so let's... Not sit here and think they're going to. Where's our deal? Yeah, right. Not, let's not sit here and think that they're going to take over WWE anytime soon. But like I said at the beginning, to me, I thought the the most recent rise of WWE, even at the end of the Vince era, but more so with Triple H taking over, was the fact that AEW was created, was nipping on their heels in certain aspects, especially in the ring. And when you start to, it was all of a sudden it became when we talked about it when they first came out. It was the Wednesday Night Wars, and that's what we talked about for at least the first year or so when they were in existence. Every Wednesday night, we were going to see something on both sides of the fence, and that's where I thought they raised the belt bar of competition, especially on the WWE side. I mean, they even said it in the Vince documentary. You know, they talked about how competition. Dave Meltzer had, I mean. The documentary kind of skips 2004 to 2024. It skips a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, it gets to the PG era, and that's kind of it. But Dave Meltzer launches into this thing, and of course he's exactly right, is that their creative peak was the Attitude Era. It was not the Ruthless Aggression Era. Now, I'm, I'm on record as saying it's better as, as good as it's ever been now, and what happened? AEW came around. Right. So, competition... Not only uh, is a creative boon for the industry, but it also means that there's more wrestlers working. There's more wrestlers getting paid. It's certainly more fun. You know, I don't want to step on uh, dynamite, but when you got guys like Shelton Benjamin showing up, I popped. Crowd popped. Everybody was excited about it. I, that's it, that's it exciting. It was like, oh, you don't say. Yeah. Out of nowhere. So, oh, Shelton. Um, Super psyched to be able to go back and watch old AEW pay-per-views on HBO. HBO, or Max, I should say. Um, that is a streaming service that to which I already dis- subscribe and to which I use a lot. And, um, I, you know, good on them. You know, there's people making fun of it online for not being as much as WWE made their deal for. It's like if WWE would have made this deal 10 years ago for 180 million or whatever, that would have, they would have thought that's a, that's a big amount, you know, 15 it, years ago. It's still a nice little chunk of change. Well, you know, we don't buy into the tribalism here and there is quite a bit of it, but this is good for everybody involved. Agreed. And including WWE. No, it keep, for me, it keeps you on your toes. They're not going anywhere for a while, right, yeah. wrong, or indifferent, whether you like it or not. WWE might not like the competition, but, you know, you got to have a little bit of friction. If yeah. it's a, you know, if there's no friction, then, you know, you're not pushing yourself to be better. That's how we got Stone Cold. That's how we got The Rock. I hate to go back to the Vince doc, but one of the things that stuck out to me was there when they talked about after uh, Vince bought out WCW, it was like, okay, now what? And then, you know, everything, the creative, um, the creative aspect of it is actually hurt at that point because now you don't have anybody to push you to go to the next level. Um, I was thinking about the Chiefs uh, the other day. I was watching them play on a Sunday afternoon. You know, they already got two championships. Now the next hurdle, the next mountain is the three-peat, which, you know, is ne- has never been done in the NFL. So it now they have something else to aspire to. Once Vince took over 
WCW, it now got to the point where there was nothing else for Vince to achieve. You know, it was him taking out his rival competition, and now at that point, it's all gravy. Here, you got your like, – I'm going to say it, there's a rival competition. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. But when you got talent going from one side to the other, it is at least competition. I'm going to say rival competition because they're close enough in um, number-wise. Well, look no further than what's happening with uh, the Lucha Brothers right now. The Lucha Lucha Brothers were uh, supposed to sign with WWE, and Tony Khan invoked some sort of injury time clause, I guess, which – you know, was on the contract that uh, I forget which one's injured or which one. I guess it was Phoenix. Phoenix was hurt. But, um, you know, that was a contract that he signed. And Tony K, Tony K is keeping them around to basically fuck with WWE. Now, listen, if you, if you sign a contract and the person that you signed a contract with decides to, you know, enforce that contract, that is what it is. You know, he's not making sense. He, yeah, it sucks. He's not making Ray Phoenix go out there and fight Broadway's while he's getting ready to go over to WWE, though. Either he's going to make no. him sit out. You yeah. know, and that's business. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's none of my. It's, it's none of my business. But there is. You know, they might not be rivals, but they are competitors. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's what ultimately where I, I think this boils down to, where this is good for everybody involved. And you said the wrestlers. Hell yeah. I mean. Bobby Lashley, obviously, should be on the way to AEW here in a little bit. Obviously, we saw uh, Sheldon Benjamin. We'll talk about that here in the one count. But, you know, now you have the ability to sign bigger name talent or in some cases, like when Will Ospreay's, you know, contract comes up again, you got to t- you have the ability to keep the big name talent. So yeah, this is a monster deal. As much as I lo- like, I said, as much as I love WWE and most of the things that they have done, when I saw this deal come through, when Zach put it on our uh, text thread, I was like, okay, this is good because now you you know that Triple H will have someone making him think two steps, three steps ahead. And if that's the case, WWE, like I said, is doing an amazing job for the most part uh, with their storylines and their wrestling. So, yeah, like I said, win-win, especially win for BFR because that means we're talking about shit more. Definitely. <laughs> and, um, man, if they're showing pay-per-views on Max, that means I don't have to worry about buying them or bootlegging them or watching them the next day. It means that I can just go ahead and, and flip it on whenever I want to. And that is, that's very exciting to me. It is, no, it's a big fucking deal. I'm going to Google this shit real quick, um, see what the particulars are. Um, we can talk about, I guess, well, I watched Rampage. Did you watch Rampage? I'm sure you didn't. Um, I did not watch Rampage. Um, Just, I'll go over the winners real quick. House of Black beats Leo Rush and... Action and uh, Andrade, uh, Action Andrade, going after <laughs> Brody King post match. Not a smart move. They're going to have a match next week um, between the two of them. It just feels like Action Andrade is slowly but surely uh, starting to flip heel. Um, Brody Lee's going to kill that boy. Yeah, with amongst other things. Uh, Anna J beats Robin Renegade. Anna J returning back from stardom. Um, she was in their five star um Grand Prix, essentially the women's version of the G one uh tournament. Um Takeshta beats Angelico. That was a decent match. Uh I like Angelico, he's just you know, lost in the sauce right now. Bill's favorite tag team, the acclaimed, beat a couple of jobbers, setting up um I'm assuming more with the MXM, but time will tell. And then the main event, you had Will Nightingale defeats uh, Ty of Valkyrie. Um, decent match, nothing too crazy. Um, it did kind of tease a Mariah May Will Nightingale match. I went just for Mariah May's title reign. I know that Tony Storm wants to have her title match or title rematch in, uh, I believe it's Australia. That's where she's from, correct? Australia? Yes. Um, and that's in February of next year. I, I know I've said it before, and, and I'm going to say it again now. 
that's a long way away. And if that's the case, Tony Khan's going to have to do some work. And I mean, you know, thinking ahead of time, you if Will is the next in line, okay, so be it. But then he needs to be thinking about Will is the right person to put against her right now, though. No problem with that. I I think it would be a good match. Will is a big baby face. It would go. It would pair well with Mariah's heel. Um, now, from that point, I would assume she would retain. Then what? Then what? I mean, I know February is going to get here before we know it, but there's still some stories that need to be told. Well, I'd Nina be more. Shirakawa. I'd be more concerned with what's going to happen with Willow after Willow loses to Mariah May because Mariah May is already calling her out for failing upwards uh, over and over and over again. So um, <laughs> I don't see Willow Nightingale taking that belt off Mariah May, though. I don't think oh, I would be stunned if that actually happened. But, you know, it is wrestling. Weird shit happens. But until you at least get Tony Storm and Mariah May in the same ring for that rematch, Mariah's probably going to have to keep retaining it to that point. I looked it up on Google. Uh, I'll just read it straight off. AEW programming will stream live on Mac simultaneously for U.S. subscribers and will be available to stream on demand starting in 2025. Doesn't specify pay-per-views, but it doesn't not say it doesn't say excluding pay-per-views. It just says AEW programming. Right. So, so. part of me thinks it would be pay-per-views, but I would be a little surprised. Well, hang on. Furthermore, a furthermore AEW live pay-per-views will be available on Max later in 2025 at a discounted price per event with all marketing and promotions though uh, yeah, uh, let's try this again. So um, you can pay for it and it probably gets charged to your Max subscription. At a discounted price per event with all marketing and promotions of those events exclusively centered on Max. So uh, that means that I can watch pay-per-views, pay for them. Discounted. And my, and my wife won't see that I paid for them. This is just coming off my cable bill. Exact mundo. Thank you, TK. <laughs> That's my dog. Let's talk collision and open up with Jamie Hayter defeating Soraya in a Soraya's Rules match. I'm just glad that uh, Jamie Hayter is now defeated Soraya. We can move her along to... Uh, Tell you what, if you're Soraya and you got Soraya's rules match and you lose, you got to just hang them up, dude. I mean, to tell you, you can't lose a match that's centered around. Go be Xavier Woods ballet. (laughs) (laughs) You ain't shit, nigga. God damn, you ain't shit. Funny, but you ain't shit. Um, Now, I'm waiting for Jamie Hayer to make her climb back to the uh, top of the, the the women's division, at least challenge for the AEW championship. Mariah May and Jamie Hayter would be an interesting uh, precursor to Tony Storm if that was going to happen. I'm not saying I want to, but just saying. Um, Learned Tree defeats Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Orange Cassidy. The big story here is our boy Chris Jericho pins Mark Briscoe after Big Bill choke slams uh, Briscoe through a table. Obviously, I'm sure I should have said this, Texas tornado rules in effect. Mark Briscoe alluded to that on uh, Wednesday's Dynamite. Dude, I'm telling you, that Chris Jericho is bitter. He is mad. (laughs) His character, he can't even hide it how shoot mad he is. (laughs) Why you say that? I just see those promos he's got. He's pissed off. He's being really snarky. I don't think that he's kayfabing the snarkiness. I think... really. I think when he, I think calling it TV time with Chris Jericho and saying, because all I want is TV time, right, guys? He is talking to the internet, man. And he is just playing to the people that say, well, I guess there have been crowds of thousands oh, of people yeah. chanting, please retire. retire. Yeah. I mean, it's not been once, it's been twice. I can't believe that they just still trot him out there every single week. Cannot believe it. On both shows. I'll, I'll go this far. It, it feels. To me, it feels like he actually has go away heat. Maybe it's the please retire chance. I don't know. No, I was getting ready to say. It me, seems to be a dead giveaway. <laughs> Watching Dynamite on Wednesday was obviously, you know, it was a walk down memory lane for a lack of a better term. And you see all, you know, the different versions of Jericho throughout time. To me, the, for me, if we're just talking AEW, 
the Judas Jericho is the Jericho I liked. It has nothing to do with the song. It just it had everything to do with the character, him coming out as really the the first real big heel of AEW. Yes. Being the name brand. And when he comes back as a babyface someday and plays Judas in my mind, the place will erupt. The place will erupt because that's a Jericho. But he has to go away for a little bit. It's not like broken records on this. If you don't go away for a little bit, people will forget that they like you. I don't know. And he's not just not going away. He is on TV on every single show. He doesn't even take a week off. It... I got the pictures to prove it, man. I got my notes here. I can go back every week. He's on Collision and Dynamite. I can't. Obviously, I can't disagree because, I mean, we watch the shit. Don't fact check me, Twitter. I'll, I'll, I'll say you, you're going to lose on this one for sure. I'll just say this. If he does go away, it, it has to be something that he would he has to do. I think a part of me thinks this is TK bringing him out here every week. If – you, if Jericho is the the true master of reinvention, the part of that is him has to go. He has to go away. Who is keeping him here every week? You know, God forbid, Hook's poor ass. I was thinking about him the other day. Somebody said Hook uh, was being uh, how they put it. Hook was being punished because Hook is not being as looked as fondly. I guess best choice of words because. Taz had was not really well booked in WWF. Dominic, it was just a whole big deal. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Hook has been booked well to start. You try to pair him with Jericho, that shit didn't Are work. Are people saying that Hook is not treated well? Uh, because of the way that... Do they want Hook to be in the title matches? I can't remember how the, the post was. but What it, do it they just, want? He's on TV every, every fucking week. week. He gets in feuds and... Friendships with huge players, with Samoa Joe. Joe, we saw Chris Jericho. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah, I almost forgot about that. I like Hook. It's just I don't, I don't have a reason to care about Hook right now. As it stands, there is nothing that Man, makes me I want do to not give a fuck about Hook. You, as you weren't obviously, you couldn't. Uh, well, then I'll let you talk about it because this is an AEW segment. You, uh, you saw Hook. Give up the FTW title. Describe your reaction. Oh, yeah. I wasn't on last week, and I texted you guys that morning when I watched Dynamite. Yeah, man. Uh, that that was my mark out moment of the year. <laughs> I was going nuts. You going to st- stand on that right now? Yeah. I was rolling around with my dog, just loving each other, just loving on each other. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Punch in the air. I called family members. Yeah, man. Uh, the FTW championship, it's... He didn't get it over, and it didn't get him over, if you ask me. I don't think it did either, but neither here nor there. Did. You know why? It's not a real title. <laughs> None of them are, but some are booked better than others. I would just leave it at that. Um, speaking of the aforementioned. It's not sanctioned. Better choice of words. The aforementioned Brody King and Action Andretti did have their match. Brody King wins that match fairly easily. Action Andretti just... I'm just waiting for him to flip out at this point. He feels like oh, they already had that match. Yeah, it was on Collision on uh, Saturday. Shit. Um, I'm wait. I was just waiting for him to flip the fuck out at this point because it just he just seems like the ticking time bomb. I'm just not sure where he goes as a heel. Uh, Jack Perry defeats uh, Suzuki by countout for the uh, TNT title in a open challenge match. Um, I don't know. I'm. This wasn't my favorite match by any stretch. Good on Jack Perry for getting baptized by Minoru Suzuki. I just don't think count out. It's just ugh. I don't. Yeah, it was hard a, for me. He's to, a heel. It was well. I'm just saying. I don't like the booking. I get the the whole. You know, wait till we, we get to dynamite. I got thoughts about the booking on dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> the heel mentality of winning by a count out. I don't have a problem with that. You win ever however you need to win. That's why you're a heel. I just wish it just uh, it just felt icky. You know what I'm saying? For it would have been no. hard for me to imagine Jack Perry pinning Minoru Suzuki. Even harder for me 
to see him submitting Mizuru Suzuki. So now as the match was going on, I'm like, how's this shit going to finish? I'll tell you what. I love Minoru Suzuki, but I would rather have Tamahiro Ishii in that spot. I like. I would rather watch a Tamahiro Ishii Jungle Jack Perry match than a Jungle Jack Perry Suzuki match. Maybe uh, maybe that's just me, but I mean Suzuki. I mean, come on, it's the same match every time. Damn, you just got challenge your inner uh, J O F Joel Farrell. <laughs> Shout out to Tinder. Joel Ball. Farrell hates him. Hates Sorry him. to put you on blast, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want that information. Hey, out there. not say <laughs> you know. <laughs> say he said it multiple times. Uh, Blackpool Combat Club uh, t- retaining their AEW trios titles over Commander and Private Party. The obviously big story coming into this match was whether or not Willie Uter was going to show up, and if so, how he was going to play into Blackpool Combat Club's uh, title defense. Basically sat on the sidelines until all of a sudden he got tagged in and got slapped a couple of times, and the next thing you know, he's trying to rip somebody's arms off. Watching... uh, Claudio and uh, Pac, like two older brothers, finally watching little brother beat somebody's ass the way they want to, was, to me, the funniest part of the whole. I wanted Commander and Private Party to win just because I I just thought that it was time for a title change. But now, after watching this match, eh, I'm ready for to watch this car wreck. <laughs> Call me what you want Uh, You mean the match next week? What? Oh, you're talking about this match. The yes. Blackpool Combat Club and Yuda versus Private Party and Commander. Yes. I was just trying to remember uh, the line. With The whole time you were talking, I was trying to remember a line that Matt Menard said because it fucking popped me. It was really, really funny. But, um, you know, I'm cool with this story. Uh, I would have been cool with it last night if Yuda would have turned also. I felt I like was kind of waiting I, I felt that. like they were teasing that maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he going to um, kick, kick that motherfucker. It was really well done, um, you know. There was just enough ambiguity that it was interesting. Yes, you know, but um, I'm I'm into this story, and I think that I I think that Pack is fucking killing it, man. Mm. I love that he's starting off their promos. Mm. Uh, he and it even Claudio seems more relaxed now. It like in this iteration, maybe it's because Pack is around, but Claudio seems cooler too. Claudio seems like a real heel who's mean, and Moxley is just. Off the charts. Chef, chef Just kiss. Off the charts. I am about 60% of the way through his book. I'm listening to it on Spotify. And I don't like listening to, I don't want to listen to him at 1.5 or 2 speeds. Like I will with some shit. But his book, so I've just had Moxley in my ears for like the last week. And uh, Moxley's cool as fuck, man. <laughs> he is cool as fuck. No, he, and that, type of and his book, his book, it's called Mox, is free on Spotify, and I recommend it to everybody listening to this. It is a if you if you're a wrestling fan, um, it like jumps around in time and stuff, and he just tells like each chapter is just like a story, and he'll go from like his old CCW days, and he'll go up to AEW, and then he'll back up, and then. It's it's pretty entertaining, but I think that Mox Mox right now is just as good as a heel can possibly be. If Will Ospreay wasn't around, would Moxley be your AEW Wrestler of the Year? Yeah, over Swerve. I mean, over Danielson too. Um, ye- no, not over Swerve. No. Swerve had the belt. He had more to do. No. No, Swerve had two insanely good matches on his title reign. It was a good title reign. It was. It was. All things considered, it was. Uh, I was worried about it at first, but overall, I thought it was. Uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, BFR's new favorite tag team, the Outrunners, had a nice little vignette. I think it was the one that we saw before, but either way. I, I think it was, too. I still <laughs> thought it was funny as fuck. Call me what you want to. If the Bill Veggie special and the Three Beers special married each other and had kids, they would have this match, Mortos versus Hologram well, well versus <laughs> Drillistico. Great description. I, I thought about this. I was like, damn, what? this is like a fucking it's, party it's match, but it's a triple threat, threat match. match. I was yeah. like, Pfft. This is what it is. It's totally what it is. Um, this match was awesome. No, it really was. I mean, all 
I kind of knew that Hologram was going to win because it felt like, you know, the push is still on for him. But Take I guess them. the the side story is Roosh coming out to collect Mortos and Drillistico, Drillistico and Roosh, obviously, with LFO ties. Um, Mortos just feels like we're just bringing him in to bring him in. But, hey, you know, if we're going to bring back some old shit, I'm all for it. So we'll see what happens. Give him something to do. We'll see what happens there. Give him a run with the fucking triple, with the trios titles, you know? I'm, uh, that would, that, that would that help. Or faction, yeah. That, well, if you gave them a, you know, at least have them challenge for the trios titles, it would give BCC another. I just don't want them to end up in Gates of Agony land. Mm. With, like two guys that like you want to see Russell all the fucking time and they're rarely on television and um, they rarely get anything to do. Like that could easily happen to Mortos and Drillistico or Mortos and Hologram. You ain't lying on that. Um, Chris Statlander with a solid uh, backstage promo. X S yeah X X M X M. I don't know why I keep fixing the uh, doing that shit, mixing the uh, the layers up. Anyway, uh, they get attacked by Billy Gunn, probably setting up once again a <laughs> match between the two teams. What you think of this segment? It was silly. <laughs> I didn't know. I honestly didn't know it was Billy Gunn. I didn't see it's a some spoiler. Some 2004 ass. WWE, WWE type shit. shit. Yeah, it was very WWE-esque. Very Billy and Chuck. Very Vince. This will be a segment that Vince... They touch the tips. <laughs> and they touch their fingertips together. They say, touch the tips. It's a little over the top. They have a ma- <laughs> modeling show. Uh, okay. But this was kind of what they were doing. <laughs> they were WWE like, oh my God, anyway. this body is chiseled. And I was like, that looks... I did not... I don't know what I was thinking. I, was I had not no idea who it was. I had no. I was not thinking Billy Gunn. No, um, but it was an it was an odd segment. I was riveted though. I would. Be, the only time I was like riveted, it was like when you know I, they started to unveil it. I'm like, who the fuck is this? You know I'm what? Like, I don't mind some 2004 ass WWE shit. No, it was it was it kept me intrigued enough to watch the segment without you know walking away. So I'll give you that much. Hang they man. need to put the belts on those guys. Now that would be oh, saying okay. something. Oh, okay, hang on, man, hang on. Slow that down. would be that would be a choice. That is bold storytelling. Yeah, that's bold. that's something. <laughs> say, look, I will tip my t- cap to them. MXM is better in the ring than I had anticipated, especially as a team. I will grant you that. I just wonder that Mansoor was the one that always fought in Saudi Arabia and mm-hmm. won every time yeah. because he was Saudi Arabian. And then Saudi Arabian, not known for their kindness to the homosexual community, uh, man. So now Mansoor is in AEW and is playing a gay dude. Uh, is he gay? Are they gay? Come on, man. That they're supposed to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> their catchphrases touch the tips, and they touch their <laughs> fingertips together. Okay, I'll just. Uh... I'm just saying. I don't, I'm into it. I'm good. If they want to be gay, be gay. They better go over the acclaimed. They are not going over the acclaimed. Stop hating on the acclaimed, dude. Okay? No. Enough's enough. I'm not going to stop hating on the acclaimed. <laughs> he said no. That's, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> I know. It's been like four months and probably longer than that. Hangman Page defeats uh, Jeff Jarrett in a lumberjack strap match. Um no surprise here. I just thought the one of well, the kind of the two stories going on is here where Hangman Page goes out near the Dark Order. Dark Order doesn't attack him immediately until Hangman attacks one of them. And then, obviously, from that point, the Lumberjacks are all trying to attack Hangman Page at various points throughout the throughout Hangman Page being on the outside. Post match, Hangman Page after the win hangs Juice Robinson over the top rope, bringing out the return of. I'm sorry, that was yeah, that was Jay White on a collision, or was that Dynamite? No, it was Dynamite. Okay, um, well we can just fast forward to that. Yeah, guns made the save. Yeah, and then okay, I'm matching up the stories. Um, 
We could talk about the, you could talk about this, or you, we can just jump to Jay White's return on Dynamite, which to me is obviously the the bigger story. Jay White's return on Dynamite was dope. Um, I was way into it. Didn't expect it. Maybe I should have, but Hangman versus Juice is a match that I wanted to see also. It's like, oh, yeah, put these fucking guys together. I didn't know I wanted to see it until it started to happen. I was like, I'm sure yeah, it I happened go. in the G1. <laughs> it had to have happened in the G1 before. I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's say, I'm, if Hangman and Juice were in the same G1, that was like really early when we started to watch it. I'll Google it. Fair enough. Um I'll just say this for the return of Jay White. I didn't expect Jay White to come out. Uh, I just didn't I didn't know who was going to make the save on uh, Juice, if, if, if anybody at all. I just thought this was just going to be more of Hangman just going. Well, I guess the story is that Hangman knocked out the ass boys earlier. Yes. Um, attacked them backstage with a chair as they were randomly doing a – backstage promo and it, it just felt weird because well no actually because they were doing you know going through the uh the highlights of the five years of dynamite and one of the uh matches on dynamite was the guns defeating the acclaimed for the tag titles i know that makes you, that should put a smile on your face zach as well um and then after that they went to the guns backstage then they got attacked by Hangman Page. Hangman Page and Juice meet. Juice loses that match. Page starts. Jay to White take. comes out. Right. Jay White uh, coming out as a babyface gets a decent pop. The Pittsburgh crowd was odd. I'll say that. Um, but he got a pretty decent pop coming back, and he's going to be a babyface. And Jay White versus this version of Hangman Page? Fuck yeah. Give it to me. Hangman Page is really good right now. One of the better. I flipped the, I flipped the corner a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. now I'm I'm on board, hundred percent. I was gonna say, uh, definitely more intriguing than Babyface Adam Page, and probably one of the better characters. That dude's just like so mad. Man. I mean, at everybody. I mean, fuck your couch, mad. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I mean, once your wife's blueberries get eaten. It's on. It's on. <laughs> I was about to say, that's the line right there. You have now crossed over that shit. Uh, main event of Collision, you had Kazuchika Okada defeats uh, Sammy Guevara in a Continental title eliminator match. I thought this was a solid match. Um, you don't usually see Okada going, at, going against guys that are more athletic, flippy, whatever word you want to use in this sentence. I thought the the two contrasting styles meshed pretty well here. You kind of knew that Okada was going to win. It was just a matter of how he's going to do it. Go ahead. Uh, oh, when Okada decided to make him look good, he made Guevara look really good. There was a couple times. I mean, Okada got a lot of offense. Um, listen, I'm going to sound like a broken record on this. I don't even want to talk about Okada. Sammy Guevara is just not – Cannot get over as a baby face. Agreed. He's got Dustin Rhodes in his fucking corner, for Christ's sake. Still can't get over. Still can't get over. No, not as a baby face. It, I'm just a firm believer. Just He's a heel. He's, Keep him as a he's heel. like the Miz. Yeah, that was going to say. He's just There's, one of those guys that should never be a baby face. Uh, just, oh, my God. I was saying that Monday night. I'm just totally look saying good. that. No, it just it feels weird. You know, it's like a, a tight pair of shoes. You're trying to put the right shoe on your left foot. You know, the shit just is like, ah, this that's motherfucker fucking, ain't going that's in. That's a really good analogy. <laughs> you know something wrong with that shit. I was like, nope, wrong shoe. Uh, let's go over the Dynamite from last night. It opens up. We talked about it earlier with uh, the Blackpool Combat Club just with another uh, fire, dude. I mean, this is the Blackpool Combat Club. We remember when they first came in. I was so excited about them. I got this excitement again. It's better. Uh, they feel more dangerous, better, whatever word you want to use in the sentence. Uh, Mina Shafir, I, I don't know what language she spoke, but whatever it was, I was like, uh oh. It was short and sweet. That's There's all I needed to know. a lot of consonants. <laughs> Somebody gone fucked up and pissed their ass off. But neither here nor there. It was really centered around John Moxley and just re reaffirming the fact that war is coming. He didn't want to do this, but now he has to do this. Still speaking in riddles like uh, Ex Excalibur said, I don't know if there's someone above John Moxley pulling the strings. 
maybe a Shane McMahon might be someone you want to throw in this scenario. We've seen pictures of him well, ra- they out and about. Did, the announcer, I think it was Excalibur, laid it on pretty thick at the end. He yeah. was like, who is John Moxley? Who is, is there some like shadowy hand or something? Mm-hmm. And it's like, is it really going to be Shane? I'm not saying it's going to be Shane. I'm just saying if there's a spot you want to bring Shane in as, this will do it. Have they called themselves the Blackpool Combat Club since they flipped heel? Because uh, Shane being the leader of the Blackpool Combat Club doesn't sound right. I don't think so. Don't They can't be called that. They got to be called the, uh, <laughs> the Mean Street Posse. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I got thoughts on Shane and the uh, the, the Vince Doc, but we'll, we'll save that for a minute. Um, Dynamite opens up, physical match opens up with Ricochet versus Will Ospreay for the AEW uh, international title. Um, not gonna lie, I was really looking forward to this match. It was delivering. I was very entertained. The false finish did get me as Will Ospreay lands on. Uh, Ricochet, and you can see Rick Knox get down on his knees. He hesitates. I'm like, don't you do this, you son of a bitch. And he counts both shoulders down. And I knew that's what he had to do. I was just sitting there like, fuck you, Tony. Don't you fucking do this shit. So, of course, they restart the match, and then I get a better result. It was not the one I expected, but it's the one I ultimately wanted at the end. Takeshita comes in, wipes out Will Ospreay, ends the match this way. So now we have a Bill Vegas special <laughs> for Russell Dream. <laughs> Ospreay versus Takeshita versus Ricochet for the it? international title match. I saw this today. I, I damn near wrecked the car on the way to work. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you, Jesus Christ. Can you fucking <laughs> believe it? Takeshita. <laughs> Osprey Ricochet in a triple threat match. Talk about so the match. Have, Talk about the triple threat. So uh, you know the match was good. If you're the, you know they they played the hits. You know mm. it wasn't. They didn't do any deep cuts. But um, the double count out um, or the double pinfall, I should say, I'm fine with if it's the end of thirty minutes. <laughs> you know, having both those guys penny have the both those guys hands on the mat. Our shoulders on the mat 15 minutes into a match or something. I mean, we've seen Osprey wrestle 45 minute matches. Like, <clears throat> so, um, but, you know, it was what it was. And Takeshita coming in, I didn't expect them to give us a clean victory in that Osprey ricochet match anyway. So, okay, I guess that was just me wishful thinking. I mean, who should have gone over? If, as the match was going on, I was thinking, okay, so if, Ricochet wins. This frees up Will Ospreay for the winner of Moxley Danielson. You got built-in storylines kind of both ways. Um, So I was kind of leaning towards Ricochet winning. I just didn't believe it in my heart of hearts. It was something was going to have to happen dramatically for me to be like, oh, shit, this is it. Um, It would have been a huge win. So that's why I was like, okay, Ricochet should win this match just for that reason. Now, I'm so glad that shit didn't happen. This is the match I wanted because now you have Takeshita coming back from the G1. Like we said, we've been waiting for something like and this to happen. Pinned, getting pinned in a triple threat is not the same as getting pinned in it's a really one-on-one match. It, it, looks, it looks, it feels a little different yeah. because now if you wanted to, Takeshita could pin Ricochet. Ricochet takes the L. Takeshita gets the dub. Everybody really – Will Ospreay walks away unscathed. You get, you get the belt off Will Ospreay, Ospreay put and it you elevate to, to Geshta. Everybody really Ricochet's wins. Ricochet's fine. Ricochet would be fine out of this. It, it would, this would not be the worst thing in the world. They Rick. have to give Ricochet wins at some point, big wins. But no, I, now, I is not, now is not the time when you got Takeshita and Ospreay. It's, this is a hard ask for Ricochet to get wins mm-hmm. over either or, whether it's Takeshita or – Will Ospreay. It would have to be in a scenario where, like I said, it would a move, two moves was like, oh shit, oh shit, yeah. and you know now you can see that actually happening. Right now, fingers crossed, Ricochet is going to be okay. Uh, backstage um, segment with Mercedes Monet. MVP gives Mercedes Monet his card. I'm not sure. Well, we'll talk. Well, let's just fast forward to it because obviously we talked about it earlier. 
Shelton uh, Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin makes his AEW uh, debut in a second backstage segment with MVP and Prince Nana. I totally forgot Prince Nana actually wrestled there for a while. I had to chuckle when he said that shit. Neither here nor there. Uh, Shelton Benjamin makes his Do you his like return. the idea of or makes his debut. Mercedes Monet with MVP? Yeah, I actually, I've, at first I scoffed at it, but the more and more I thought about it, when I was watching it this morning, I love it. Mercedes, Mercedes, what biggest problem with everybody, and whether it, it's people who like her or people that don't like her, I think I think that we could all agree that promos is her biggest weakness. MVP is there Shut just up, talk. Bitches. <laughs> MVP is there just to talk and talk alone. That could take a ton of pressure off her. You can ha- still have Camille be the basically the the bodyguard for the whole damn syndicate yeah, if you wanted to yeah. and go you that route. Put them together. That put them in the hurt total business fucking or whatever they're gonna call them. The hurt syndicate is what I thought was the temporary name I saw. Neither the hurt syndicate. Do. I'm cool with that. Yeah, that's all right. Ultimately, I would love to see that. I think the swerve thing is a ruse to bring in Bobby Lashley. That's fine. But Mercedes Monet and MVP together, I think that would make a lot of sense and would get some of the heat off of Mercedes on the microphone. I'm all for it. Um, we talked about the, kind of talked about the guns getting attacked backstage by Adam Page. That mm-hmm. ends up leading into the Adam Page Juice Robinson match. Page wins. Uh, Jay White returns to make the save. Talked about, well, we haven't talked about TV time yet, but we'll talk about it here really quick. TV time with Chris Jericho. So Chris Jericho challenges Mark Briscoe. I'm going to take over here for a second because I, I have a question. And says, <clears throat> we know you can never beat me, but I'm sure your brother could have, or something to that effect. And he said, you'll never be as good as your brother, pause for dramatic effect, was. So, are you okay with the cheap heat of bringing in Mark Briscoe's this recently deceased brother, uh, tag team champion, uh, co-tag team champion, uh, and his brother who, let's face it, you know, was better. Uh, <laughs> Jay Briscoe. I mean, that's. I mean, nobody doubts it. Mark Briscoe was never ROH champ until his brother died. Stop. Just. Keep, I got to keep it real. Um, <laughs> are you okay with the cheap heat? Uh, I'm sure they talked about it Man. beforehand. Um, Did if, I just sound like a total dick? Not a total dick, a little dick. Um, Giving praise to a dead guy. Yeah, right. If if he likes it, I love it, ultimately. it Did it make me react? Yeah. So, ultimately, it did its job. But I'm sure that Jericho and Mark Briscoe at least discussed this beforehand. So. Yes. I, I mean, I'm sure it was met with a blessing. But, uh, you know, it is cheap heat. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Because as soon as he said it, I was like, oh, you better punch this motherfucker right now. <laughs> I mean, like two minutes later, Jericho's on the ground. Like, yeah, that's what Christian I walks around talking about people's dead dads every single week, though. Somebody go kill that motherfucker. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Who killed Christian Cage? If that happens on AEW, then somebody, I'm telling you, somebody listened to this podcast, yep. and then it came to, ha- and somebody told Tony Khan it didn't it. happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Jack Perry and Shibata uh, fight in, I guess, not backstage, but it was met. They met backstage. They fought. Like the loading dock. Got into the ring or whatever the case may be. Jack Perry, Shibata for the TNT title somewhere down the line. I'm for ultimately. it. Um, I bet that'll happen at Wrestle Dream. And quiet as it's kept, Jack Perry can kind of wrestle. You know? Well, fuck yeah, he can. And I would be curious to see how he and Shibata would match up against each other. I would assume I mean, Jack he's, Perry would he's, win. I mean, he's still kind of a baby, you know? In the grand scheme of the wrestling world, yes, but he does have some wrestling, um, like some grappling moves in the ring that can be a little fun to match up against Shibata with. So, like I said, I'll be curious to see what what happens there. Danielson uh, with a backstage um, vignette, whatever the case may be. Britt Baker returns back home to Pittsburgh to defeat <laughs> Serena Deeb. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Post match, Serena Deep attacks Britt Baker. Um, you know they both they both <laughs> left the restaurant at the same time. Britt Baker was eating, and Serena Deep was her server. 
<laughs> I was trying to make it through. <laughs> I was trying. You ain't shit, man. God, why do you hate Serena Dean so much? I don't, man. I like her. I don't know why I'm so mean to her. Dude, you are just ruthless. It's like she says something bad about you. I liked her when she was in the Straight Edge Society. Yeah, look. You talk about me turning on night. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you just doing the same one eighty. She goddamn. just does look like an Applebee's waitress. She Lord. just does. She has a. She looks like an Applebee's waitress. Um, Mariah May, um, at ringside, watching this match. Are you interested in Britt Baker and Mariah May? Yeah, yeah. I'm of course. Curious. No, I'm yeah. curious too. I'm, I'm in the Mariah May. I, uh, most red blood in Americans, <laughs> <laughs> not even Americans. I like to watch her. <laughs> Me too. Hook uh, backstage talking to Renee Paquette. Um, side note: Taz was apparently attacked in the parking lot before the Dynamite episode. Nigel McGinnis stepping in on commentary. So the question is, who attacked Taz? Hook obviously distraught. He wants answers. Christian Cage with another. Amazing fucking promo. I, I don't even know. I, a part of me wants him to win the title just because it's, it feels like he has earned the right by this monster heel run. And a part of me hopes that he doesn't win the title just to see the meltdown of him just reacting about him losing this title. Either way, Luchasaurus obviously gone for a little bit for those who didn't know. Um, Hook was so fucking mad. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, Luchasaurus has uh, pneumonia or something. Yeah, um, he's down for a little bit. Um, not sure when he, his return is. So Hook, Hook was acting like <laughs> – go ahead. No, hopefully he's okay, but go ahead. I got this joke I got to get out. Uh Hook was acting like uh, somebody spilled Code Red on his Dreamcast. He was so fucking mad. <laughs> 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 Slapping the golden dog. I'm like, damn, Dick. You, you, come, here, come on, man. Guys. No, you, you overselling I'm this so shit. I'm so mad. Yeah, you overselling this shit. You you need to be more somber about this shit. Be like, man, I'm going to fuck this. You know, he just was like mad, man. Like you, like you said, somebody spills some shit He looks shit like he him. should be playing haggy sack in the quad, man. <laughs> he does. I just do not see an adult when I see him. <laughs> okay. Part of the reason why I'm not, I just can't be sold on hook just yet. He just... Uh, he hasn't earned his stripes, at least in my mind. That's just me. Mariah May and Willow backstage, they come confront each other. That probably is going to be a match somewhere down the line. I don't think it's official yet, but we will we shall see. Private Party uh, squashes uh, the another BFR favorite, the Iron Savages. Uh, Private Party throws down the gauntlet, saying they're going to be AEW Tag Team Champions this year. Um I don't see that shit. Uh, who came out here? Tony had just got done watching the WCW Thunder because this was a loaded ass segment. It had Private Party, the Iron Savages, Stokely Hathaway, the Young Bucks, Jungle Jack Perry, okay. and Shibata. So this turns into ultimately a six man tag for next week. Um, I believe it's tomorrow night on Rampage or Collision, one or the other. Yep. Private Party and Shibata versus, excuse me, the Bucks and. Jack Perry, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so curious to see that. Decent showing for private party, but once again, I'll say it for – I will probably can speak for all of this. If you're going to have the Iron Savages on, you got to let them talk. That's all I ask. From that point, squash them, kick them to the side, wherever the case may be. Talked about the MVP, Prince Nana and Sheldon Benjamin, the debut of Sheldon Benjamin, uh, and then obviously the main event, and I'll let you take over from here because I have my own personal thoughts as well. Okay. Title for title, um, Kazuchika Okada putting up the Continental title versus Brian Danson putting up the AEW championship for the first 20 minutes. The Continental title was up for grabs, and then 20-plus going forward, it was the AEW championship. Go ahead. I did not listen to the podcast last week, but did they announce this match in advance? As far as I was concerned, there was no build. There was no connecting of the dots I looked up and this match was made I mean I didn't know it was going to be the main event until I turned on dynamite this morning and it was like oh what the fuck so you're looking at this and then it opens with Blackpool Combat Club Ricochet and Osprey come out and I'm thinking oh my god this is going to be a fucking insane dynamite they had two well, five year uh, episodes. Yeah. Shit. Okay. So Ricochet and Osprey and Danielson and Okada both had shit finishes. Mm. Um, they didn't 
book it. First of all, I said the Pittsburgh crowd was strange earlier, and it's because they were really dead for this match, and they didn't seem like they were dead the whole night. So um, I'm not sure because this match was really fucking good. Um, those two guys, uh, they're I mean, they're two of the best in the world. Uh, they're two of the best to have ever done it. Um, and uh, this match was fucking awesome. Uh, Black Bull Combat Club coming out <clears throat> was fine, I guess. But it was also kind of overbooked with the 20-minute stipulation. I mean, I enjoyed watching this match, and I wasn't turning away, and I wasn't uh, doing something else. Like, I was paying attention to it, and I thought it was fucking awesome. I didn't like the step. I don't like title for titles. But, well, it, I get it. I get why you do it. You know, it's going to make me watch. It's going to boost the numbers. I it doesn't, get all that. It doesn't. It just doesn't mean anything, though, because nobody ever thought that either guy was taking the other guy's belt. Ultimately. So, for me. And they but, booked it like pussies. You know. <sighs> I mean, as much as I would love to see Okada be AEW champion, it wasn't going to happen here. And and I we all know this. So I wouldn't say they booked it like pussies. They're booking it the way that TK envisions it. The backslide kind of protects. Like a pussy. <laughs> the backslide protects Okada, especially when he's being distracted, quote, unquote, by Blackpool Combat Club. That being said, wasn't a huge fan of it, but I get it. At least makes sense. Okada taking out his frustration post-match. That's cool, too. Talked about the uh, Moxley discussion. But like I said, when Will Uta got in that ring, I was like, okay, this is what I'm waiting for. I was literally thinking he was going to, when he was on the ropes, I thought he was going to come down and then, like, super kick fucking uh, Danielson in the face and join Blackpool Combat Club. I was waiting for it. Yeah, I was waiting for it, too. Um, it It... Like I said before, I like the story, but having an Okada Danielson match and the end of that match being you're going to get a tag team match next week is just like, well, okay, you know, it should be the other way around. It should be. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why they gave us Danielson Okada last night. It seems. Oh, I I know why. I just I don't like the finish of it. That's all. Well, if you can't have a good finish, then don't book the match. I've been saying that for a long time. Y'all motherfuckers be looking at me crazy while I say some shit like that. This has been Cornette's Corner. (laughs) That wraps it up on Dynamite, AEW in general. Um, Big week for uh, AEW. Uh, Obviously, like we said at the Open, their five-year deal is going to keep everybody at least on their toes for the foreseeable future and obviously give us more to talk about. So, yeah, congratulations to Tony Khan and AEW. Let's get to that two count. All right, the two count is going to be WWE. Now, we also have WWE Bad Blood predictions coming up, so we might kind of skim over some of this. But um, uh, SmackDown opens up with RKO or with Randy, Cody, and KO versus the Bloodline. Um, KO is selling, you know, some displeasure at <laughs> Cody Rhodes' uh, recent decision-making. So what do you think about the opening segment? Um. Love Randy Orton calling out Cody and, you know, basically sowing the seeds of, uh, you know, well, not even sowing the seeds, just reminding us of their friendship, legacy, all that stuff. Kevin Owens still not saying, you know, why he's upset with Cody, but slowly but surely it played itself out. Um, This is probably one of the better uses of the bloodline with Sol Sokoa as the head. Just, you know, re- reminding everybody that, hey, it it's not you guys that can get the job done. Roman can get the job done, but whenever you guys help Cody Rhodes out, you guys drop the ball. And that was a nice way to use uh, Sola Sokoa as, a, as the foil that we – at least I want him to be where – he's not going to be Roman Reigns. That it's just it's a hard act to follow when if you're so a Sokoa. Well, I mean, Roman Reigns is just completely a natural. I mean, his look is unlike anybody else's look. So a Sokoa don't look like Roman Reigns. So to follow him is a hard task. I thought this was a good use of him here. It's hard out here for ugly people. <laughs> um, 
Preach. Uh, so uh, Bailey goes over Naomi. Ba- Bailey's going to get the title shot against Nia Jax. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Carmelo Hayes and Andrade have their sixth match in their best of seven series, and Carmelo Hayes goes over in what was my favorite match of the series thus far. I was just going to say that. Um, LA Knight comes out. He he got jumped by Carmelo Hayes earlier. What do you think about this? Honestly, because obviously we're, we're going to get a seventh match, and I was thinking about this after I watched SmackDown. It could go either way. I would. My heart kind of wants Carmelo to win it because I think he's a future, you know, long term star. My head says it's Andrade because he's the a established star. The way I would do it, if you could do it, if I had the pencil, this is where you bring Charlotte back. You have Charlotte help Andrade beat Carmelo Hayes, have them re- reunite as heels and go forward. Isn't that a little small for Charlotte? I don't think it's that small. I guess not if you're gonna have if you're gonna really push Andrade, but if Charlotte's, that ultimately that's if why Charlotte's hanging out with Andrade, that means our Andrade's getting pushed to the moon. That's me shrugging it because you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's an audio platform. Um, there was an AJ Styles vignette. I guess he's coming back. Me Shin versus Piper. And then uh the the tag team match at the end and then the schmaz, which is what we all thought. Um, we'll have a lot more to say about the bloodline later. Um, anything to say about that? Uh, just two things. AJ coming back. Um, I won't say hopefully, but if this is his last run, I hopefully in that scenario, hopefully he gets, has some good matches used properly on the way out the door. The final match, the main Another event. Another title run? Um, uh, no, I was going to say, I, I think that's asking a little too much, especially with, you know, guys coming back, Rock coming back, Reigns coming back, Cody is the champion. I'm just not sure where AJ will fit in that top tier of a SmackDown. He should go to Raw. Gunther, Braun Breaker. Um, Jay Uso. Ilya Dragunov's got a torn, torn ACL. ACL. Yeah, I saw that. That that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, maybe. I mean, if you wanted to give him, you know, put Gunther over on the way out, you can go that route too, but uh, hopefully, I just hope AJ Styles just gets a good run on the way out the door. The main event was basically the water on the seeds of what so- Sokoa said. All that shit that you know, you don't want Cody down. Now Cody comes out, ultimately helps Bloodline win the match indirectly. KO snaps a little bit. KO flips first. Randy follows. Ultimately, is, is the way I see it playing out. You think they both flip heel? Yes. I Um, think Cody needs something to do that's not Roman Reigns related. Especially if they're going to have the Bloodline versus Bloodline uh, War Games match. At some point, Cody's got to have a different storyline. Having him face, and we talked about it, having him face Randy Orton is one of those things I want to see. Uh, Jay Uso comes out to open up Raw, moving on to Raw, and cuts a babyface promo that I made notes on. And I put the letter Z seven times above it. Wow. <laughs> right here. Damn. Yeah, that'll do it. That's cold, dude. You didn't like the promo? Fuck no, I didn't like the promo. He was just talking like this. So people would say, Yeet, he loves you. He really loves you. He loves you so much. He's glad to be the champion. Mm-hmm. Yeet. He loves his mother. It's like, okay, dude, god damn, it sucked. I've been waiting to shit on this for days. I don't think it was nearly. This was a terrible promo, dude. It, let's uh, not like act a baby like... face promos or baby face promos, sure. He's not out there to set the world on fire. No. But he was out there to, he wanted the entire audience to absorb his charisma, and he just had nothing to say. I think we all know Jay Uso has charisma. I don't think that should be even. Yeah, he does. Okay, and it, so. He's not using it. This it, yeet thing is a albatross around his fucking neck. Are you out of your mind? Jay Uso. Is, for is, his promos, I should say. For this promo, I'll give you that. He's over. A, part of, not a over. part of the reason why I think he was using it as a crutch is that 
as the promo as a total, he kind of said why he was he was emotional to this point. His mom, part being a part of twi- being a twin, you know, being in Roman shadow. This was Jay Uso trying to, at least in my opinion, trying to hold his Listen, emotions together. Every as once in a while on this, this show, I have to just kill something beautiful. Just, so, <laughs> just to remind everybody that I'm still the asshole. I may have softened a little bit, but I'm still the asshole. Jay Uso sucks. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I didn't think it was doing that bad. Braun Breaker coming out was a little bit of a surprise because I, I was wondering what they were going to do well, with it. Well, it was a surprise until it happened later. So Then I, I was like, oh, okay, fuck it, let's go. He's turning babyface, yes. and he's going for Gunther. Okay. okay. I, mean, I don't know if he's going for Gunther immediately, but he's I, going I, for Gunther. And if he dropped <laughs> if he dropped the IC belt to Jay Uso to sh- keep shooting on up to the top, I'm completely for it. This is ballsy booking. I fucking love it. Braun Breaker versus Gunther. Strike while the iron's fucking hot with Braun Breaker, dude. He'll be a made man. The, a loss to Gunther right now would not hurt Braun Breaker. Not and, at all. And I, I have to wrap my head around that it being would, the the bigger long term. It story. would it would be such an endorsement for him. That's that's what it would be. That would be the biggest thing is that WWE is saying we gave him the ball to see if he could run with it, assuming that he runs with it, which I'm assuming that he will. That he won't be overshadowed by the moment or by the big bright lights that shine on the World Heavyweight Championship. If he goes through it well, that's that's laying the groundwork. Braun Breaker, uh, the sky is the fucking limit. I don't want to see it right away. I do want to see it. We did see it in NXT, obviously, with their uh, unification match. So... <clears throat> you got a dog over here, Braun Breaker. Oh, 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 no, oh, and... Oh. and, and when Jay Uso said that, and everybody started to bark, I was like, "Okay, he's the next big baby face. Could easily overshadow yeah, Jay Uso." Uso gave him the stamp of approval too. So in that scenario, I was like, "Okay." Now I'm, I felt a little more, you know, convinced that Braun Breaker as a baby face could actually work because fans are gravitating to him. They were gravitating to him as a heel, so it should work as a baby face. Let's talk about. Both segments that happened with the new day, <laughs> where um, it still looks like we're getting towards a slow Xavier Woods heel turn. Xavier Woods uh, pisses off Rey Mysterio. They have a match. Kofi and Xavier Woods talk backstage like, what the heck, man? Um, and <clears throat> Kofi ended up having a match later on against Chad Gable, uh, two guys that can really go. Uh, what do you think about these segments? What do you think about where the New Day is going? Slow Xavier Woods, Woods turn uh, against the Rey Mysterio in the Rey Mysterio match. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I'm with uh, Joe Testator. Uh He pulled the mask off and took advantage of the situation now. 100%. How, how you want to spin that, you know, how Xavier wants to spin that, I'll wait until next week. In the Chad Gable match, it's an accidental trip of the leg, and now you have Kofi Kingston in a scenario where he's vulnerable to the finish for Chad Gable. If it was me, once again, if I had the pencil, the New Day anniversary is in November, so that it's just a month away. You can play this thing out until... Big E comes back for the quote unquote anniversary episode. Let's just say it's um uh the first episode of uh Raw in November. It's a two hour episode. So starting on if I'm not mistaken, it starts next week. We're all being two hours for the rest of the year. So that's gonna be curious to see how they play that stuff out, but ne- neither here nor there. If it was me, I would wait until Big E came back for their segment where they're trying you know it's a celebration of the 10 years of the new day and at that point you would have Big E trying to be the mediator between uh Kofi and Xavier Woods now from there this is where you can have Xavier Woods 
beefing with uh, Big E as a former champion, Kofi as a former champion, or you guys are looking down on me, yada, yada, yada. The key to it is that Kofi, I'm sorry, uh, Xavier Woods would have to strike Big E in some form or fashion to where now that really, if you want to flip um, Xavier, I think that's the way to do it. Hitting Kofi would be one thing. Hitting Big E, beloved, who's been gone for a while, that's a totally different scenario, and I think that would be the perfect way to flip. Man, Woods I, th- if I you think did even it. hitting Kofi would be a big deal. They've been together for ten years. He's ten been years. gone for a while, and it it wasn't like you know this is they wrote him off you know in kayfabe style. Kayfabe he style. you know he unfortunately he got hurt. If he just comes back and is like I said, just you know, hey guys, come on, man, chill out, chill out, and somehow, some way, you know, Xavier hits Big E. Let's say there he's in the middle, and you know, Woods like fuck this shit, I'm throwing punch at uh, Kofi, and he accidentally hits Big E. That would be like, oh, you you would still get the same effect, and you would still have people looking at Xavier sideways. So. That's that's just me. That's I'm, what I want. I'm, I'm interested again. I'm back and interested. Big, um, bring, e, big, bring, bring Big E back and be more interested. Lyra Valkyra versus Zoe Stark, Caden Carter and Casey Cotton, or Katana Carter and whatever their names are. <laughs> Casey and Casey. That's why I keep writing down. Um, oh, shit. They used to. Oh, it's Katana Chance and Caden Carter. It used to be Katie Catanzaro. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Or Casey. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, so let's get to the McIntyre and Punk part because that part is interesting. Uh, this is, they're selling it like a real blood feud. And, uh, this was a good go home promo for a, for a hell in the cell match. Didn't you think? Oh, it's going to open uh bad boy, which is, uh, it's a hell of a fucking, uh, curtain jerk. And it, I just, it goes to my whole thought of, you know, oh, you should never want to open the show. They Fuck said that? that. Yes, it's it gonna is. Open? It's going to open, and the tag match is going to be the uh, the main Where event. is that pay-per-view? It's in Atlanta. Okay. Cody's a backyard. I mean, come on. You'd, you'd be fooled to think if it, they were not going to be the main event. Um, like I said, this to me just adds more fuel to my fire of feud of the year with Punk and Drew. I was riveted the whole way through. Both sides, both sides got their shots in. Both sides made me want to. I'm really, really interested. I don't have any idea who's going to win this match, but I'm damn sure excited to see this shit. They have got me like both guys out in my head are going to be bleeding in some form or fashion. This should be the most violent of all the matches because it has to be a blow off for a little bit. Maybe until Royal Rumble comes around, you have them cross paths again. I think whoever loses this match wins the Royal Rumble. That Interesting. Is, that's my prediction. I, well, the winner is probably springboards towards going through the loser, probably just hangs Drops out. back, the and then he wins the Royal Rumble. I could see that. Um then in that scenario, I want Drew to win. <laughs> it's not even because I want Punk to win the Rumble. I just want – I like Drew so much. He has been just an, an amazing heel. If we had heel of the year, he would be my vote for least on the WWE side. Um, just watching him do his work, especially against Punk, has been an amazing just joy to have him – do his thing, and like I said, this should be in the, one of the better matches of the card, for I, sure. I don't have much to say about Judgment Day versus LWO and then Ripley and Priest coming out. Um, you know, we'll get to live in Rhea in a little bit. There was another Wyatt Six vignette, there, and then there was the Gunther-Sammy part, which I don't really remember very much of. Um, trying to think about it. Sammy came, uh, came out. Oh, he finally gave him his match. match after, That's right. Well, oh, Gunther, Gunther was down. really good here. When Gunther said, uh, "Your parent, your family expects you to lose," he's like, "My family expects me to be great." Uh, that was uh, really good shit by Gunther, and it's going to be even made made even better because Gunther is going to beat Sammy. So um, I'm into this. I just wish it wasn't on Raw, but like I said, with Raw going to two hours uh, starting next week through the rest of the year. They like Triple H likes the five match pay per view. I'm not look, I'm not mad about that shit. I mean if, if they're five matches that, you know, 
have good storylines going into it, and you you deliver with the the physical matches. I would rather Sammy okay. and Gunther be on the five match pay per view than yeah, Nia Jax and Bailey. Um, yeah, for sure. If you're gonna do it, then let's really do it. I would love to see that match, Sammy and Gunther, on a bigger stage, but they're gonna still have a banger on Raw. It and it will give them, you know, it will give the number for two hours probably a bigger pop because people will be, you know, more willing to invest it into the two hours versus the normal three that we've been dealing with for years. Uh, awesome Truth goes against Authors of Pain, who are, yes, still on the roster. Uh, they're out there a lot, but Awesome Truth breaks up. Uh, there is I there's a Miz heel turn. Um, Miz is just, I mean, so much better as a heel. It's just not even close. There's, there's, I mean, Miz is fine. I don't hate when the Miz is on TV, no. and I don't look. For, I don't tune in to see him. No, you know what I mean. But Miz has a. But if he's going to be on role. TV, if they're going to put him on TV, then I want him to be a heel. Yeah, Miz has a role, you know, and he's usually the guy that's going to get somebody else over, or you know, has the uh, the Miz TV. Uh, segment obviously we saw that on NXT whatever the case may be at this point Miz has basically done all he can do at the top of the card you know he's been champ Wrestlemania yada 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 now he's more for it at least for me as entertainment value but he's still a good hand don't be surprised to see him and Braun Breaker cross paths at some point coming up in the near future as two cool. guys that have flipped you know, st- different sides of the Squash fence, whatever ass. the case may be. But, no, this was, to me, a long time coming for Miz. He's been trying to talk to Braun Strowman, blowing him off. Uh, Truth keeps getting him in the matches that, you know, all of a sudden he's, you know, what the fuck you mean? You, you know, we lost the tiles because of you. You know, I'm getting beat down because of the, uh, uh, Bronson Reed. You know what I'm saying? This was a while, and when well, Miz says why – he should bring up all the things that just happened because of other people. So why are you mad at me because this motherfucker getting me caught up in some shit? And then finally we have Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman um, in a true battle of the big men. I mean, this is big meaty men slapping meat. Um, uh, Strowman ends up going over. And I was thinking Jason said he'd be pissed if Bronson Reed didn't go over, but I'm sure that Jason was okay with this. Uh... <laughs> but, I'm trying to give a poker face. I'm trying. Well, let me ask you this first. Okay. Is this the greatest Braun Strowman match of all time? Uh, yeah, recent memory. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a Roman Reigns match out there that it, um that I like that might be better. But this is what I was saying before about Braun Strowman. He's more of a, you know, a wild factor kind of guy. He's the, you know, I'll flip this tractor trail over kind of guy, you know, so you need to use him in, you know, big wild kind of spots, you know, getting splat or tsunami on to the car, big spot, ring imploding, big spot. So for me, this was probably one of the best ways to use Braun Strowman. Was it his best match? I'm willing to, you know, say it's one of the top five. Now, if I can name the other four, you know, I should be in Dave Meltzer's spot. That All that being said, I was, for 30 seconds, I would be lying if I said seeing Seth Rollins come out to help Strowman, it pissed me off. I would be lying if I said otherwise, but I should have known when you saw him. Well, he didn't come out to help Strowman. He came out to fuck Bronson Reed. Whatever. When you saw, For me, when I saw him on, you know, Sunday Night Football, you know, Saturday, whatever, I should have known right then he was coming back to there help There was out. that really good Braun Strowman, uh, Yoshihashi match in the G1 <laughs> that one year. Put Strowman in the G1. Um I love this match. I'm just surprised they didn't play Seth Rollins' music when he came out because I was expecting a burn it down, and uh, they didn't give it to me. He just came out with no music. That surprised me. No, it's, I was, thought this, th- was this really obvious? Did you guys predict this last week? No. I Honestly, I, I knew Seth Rollins was going to come back, but I thought Bronson Reed would go over, and then you would have him going strong 
and then have Seth Rollins come back and you go from there. This is not a, a bad use of bringing back Seth Rollins. It makes perfect sense in kayfabe style. So that's why I'm not mad about it. Gets and, Bron- it gets Bronson Reed over. Well, it gives him something to now immediately do. It protects Strowman. You're going to have a spinoff feud with Seth Rollins, obviously. I think that's underselling it a little bit. I think this makes Bronson Reed look like a really big fucking deal. We'll see. Bigger deal than he was. He's elevated. Is he? Yes. Putting Seth Rollins on the shelf and then having Seth Rollins use his re-entrance uh, to come out and attack you? Yeah, that that put that, yeah. Okay, and, all right, all right. So then, so what's the end game? How does this feud Didn't we talk end? about this a couple, oh, what's the end game? How does the feud end? I mean, Rollins ends up going over. Okay, so how is that? It, so we're elevating Bronson Reed because Seth is that good? Or we, I feel like we talked about this a couple weeks ago where I was like, Bronson Reed's ceiling is like the IC and having a match against the champion. Bronson Reed's ceiling, he, he, could, he, could, he could face off for the title in a pay-per-view match, but he could not win. That's what I think is ceiling in because we were comparing in the Braun Breaker no, and Carmelo no, Hayes. I, no, okay. I, I do remember this conversation. I guess here's where my problem is, is now that we've kind of had him go through this Braun Strowman mini feud or whatever the case may be, I still look at him as a main event star, and now you're you're using you're telling me that we're going to use him to get Seth back to where he's – going to naturally be at no, the top of the card. It's not for, I mean, it's not for Seth. It's giving Seth something to do, but Seth can't be involved with anybody else right now, and you might as well use him to make a guy bigger, and that's what they've done with Bronson Reed. Dude, He, he those tsunamis they did three weeks in a row, that got him over. I'm not disagreeing with that. I mean, in my brain, anyway. It, it, it put him back on the map, but... It's still now I need a, a, a if there's no payoff for all this, so what do we do to all this for? You know what I'm saying? You drop if he's dropping all these guys, there's not a payoff. He didn't beat Braun Strowman. He got you know stomped off by Seth Rollins. If he loses this feud to Seth, Seth Rollins, now what? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not even arguing with you. Um, so that's gonna do it for our two count. About three. damn time. Shit. JCB, what's the three count? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll leave it up to you. I guess we can talk to Doc for a little bit. I'm assuming you've watched. You said you've watched. Uh, I finished it. You finished it. I finished mm-hmm. it as well. I'll let you go first. What did you think? Uh, I thought it was incredible. I thought that um, it's not made for guys like you and me. Uh, it's not made for people that have seen all the dark sides of the ring you know like i told murray on facebook i was you know because murray said it was boring it's like yeah it was boring you know i've i've watched plenty of documentary footage of the montreal screw job mm-hmm. i have learned i learned about the montreal screw job i think when i read mick foley's first book um because i was not watching it in 1997 but that was the first time i ever heard about the montreal screw job didn't remember when it happened but it is such a famous incident. I mean, it is – I mean, I, I'm not even trying to be flip. It's like 9-11 for professional wrestling. It yes. was like the moment – it was like everything changed after that. Um, it's such a landmark thing. But I've spent the last 25 years thinking about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, it's not exciting to me, but I was getting – text messages from friends and loved ones who are watching it and they know that uh you know i'm a mark and they're like oh shit this shit's crazy this thing's crazy this thing it's crazy and it's like yeah and when you watch it all aggregated like that um i thought that i thought it made vince look ultimately like probably the reprehensible human being slash monster that he is i mean he is fucking insane and he has been insane for a long fucking time and his humiliation fetish thing that we used to laugh about about making people lose in their hometowns every single time somebody went 
and fought in front of their family, Vince McMahon would make them lose. You know, there was that guy that used to give me tickets that worked for WWE, and one of the guys was at the bar with them. They were like, he put him on TV because the guy was of South Asian descent, and he put him out there with the great Kali, and the great Kali like dumped a bunch of shit on him or something, and Vince was doing it because the guy kind of irked him with one thing that he did. It was like, and this was a backstage guy, and like... It's just in when you watch it, like I said, when you watch it all aggregated like that, along with the current day Vince being pretty open, um, weird. I, my jaw dropped when he said, yeah, I have three computers in my head. And the guy's like, what's the other computer thinking about now? He's like, well, it's something about it's sex. sex. I was and like, it's like, what? what? <laughs> Dude, like. You said, dude, you're a, it's a hot mic. It's he, a hot he mic. He said that right after he said, you never know what the other one's thinking about. <laughs> and it's like, now I'm going to tell you. It's like, okay, and now you're just thinking about sex, you fucking old man. You're dude. sitting here. It's like, uh, you know, whatever. Okay. Some people are hornier than others, I guess. God bless them. And- but, uh, uh, but the stuff that really stuck with me, you know, like the Owen Hart stuff. I know it all. I know yes. it front and back. Yes. I I could do that. I could do the voiceover on that documentary. Um, that's still tough to watch. That's to a, this day. still tough to watch. But like the stuff with um, the massage parlor chick uh, that he, I think it was Mickey James, but like somebody a massage or somebody at a tanning salon accused McMahon of sexual assault. And six weeks later, after they dropped their case because of lack of evidence, six weeks later, Vince puts somebody working at a tanning salon, I think it was Mickey James, falsely accusing somebody of sexual assault. That's fucking insane, man. Uh, the shit with Ashley Massaro, very sad. And that is a, that's a fucking weird backstage segment to watch. With context, with the context that we have now, it's like evil shit. Yeah. Um, a <clears throat> couple other things stood out to me, but what stood out to you? Um, Shane McMahon. That was the one that really stuck out with me because it it was a lineage of Vince didn't have a good relationship with his father. And you would think that, in my, at least in my head, someone that doesn't have kids, you would want to go out of your way to make sure you have uh, a better relationship with your son, especially with the son. And that clearly wasn't the case. Shane so desperately craved his dad's approval the same way Vince Jr. craved Vince Sr.'s approval. I mean, that promo that Shane's cutting to Vince where he's talking about all he ever wanted was him to be proud of him and shit. It's like, cut. they cut that so effectively. It was like, holy shit. Yeah. It, it looked so fucking real and dramatic and shit. Yeah, um, and, and it just it <clears throat> just amplified, you know, just how I, was, I felt bad for Shane. Because then you, you see him, like, going through the the King of the Ring or one, trying to get through the Ring. 100% of- felt bad for Shane. And he seemed sad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> legitimately, you know, this hurt to say. The hug after the the, uh, the WrestleMania match, you know, after he left and then came back. And he said, he said I guess I earned that one. I'm like, you think? You think? Oh, you- but he said that with, like, acid, though. It was... There was there was a lot behind because that. he earned it way beforehand, and now he's just getting it here. Here's your flowers. Twenty years after the fact, Shane. There it, you go, brother. Uh, Get the fuck out of here, Vince. That shit's crazy. Talk the to um, me. the Benoit stuff again. Something that I know frontwards and back, but um, the uh, CTE part of it. I'll tell you what, I'm a Stone Cold Mark through and through. Uh, Stone Cold saying that he doesn't believe in CTE was Crazy. really disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> it's I like, was like, what? what? You, it's like, you sound so stupid, right? right? You sound look, like a flat earther. Look, love Stone Cold. One of the best in the in the business. Past, present, probably future. That was the dumbest thing oh, he's ever Oh, Stone Cold said. Steve Austin? Yes. One of the best, huh? You, you like Stone Cold? You think he's pretty good? Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> On my Mount Rushmore, so yeah, I, I think very highly. I almost wonder if he was misspeaking and he was trying to say that he didn't believe that <sighs> that CTE caused Crispin Watt to snap, uh, and that's the way he said it. Then because we need to see 
that entire because clip. they cut straight to Chris Nowinski who's like CTE is something you can see on an on an MRI. He's like it's a physical thing. He's like it's not an imaginary. Yeah, so I mean, it it's just, actually a thing. It didn't make Stone Cold look very good right there. Uh, borderline ignorant. So I don't know. It just I met Chris yeah. Nowinski in a uh, restaurant in Chicago one time. And you know what I gave him? An unprotected chair shot. <laughs> <laughs> what like, shit? Um, He's big. The Montreal screw job, obviously, that was um, a huge thing. But to, to open that show, I think that was episode two, um, when Wendy Richter had to drop the title and she didn't want to do it. I vaguely remember that. I think. Uh, I don't really remember that. The fabulous Mula was. Um, the Black Widow, or something along those lines, and I think uh, I remember the roll up, and it was just weird because it was like one, two, three. I'm like, what the fuck? And the next thing you know, the title was changed. Um, yeah, out of all, you know, I thought I knew all the stories. I didn't. I didn't know that one. It was, but it, it's obviously the precursor to why Vince does what he did down the line. It's. It's not business. It's never personal with Vince. It's always business. I loved how they were like, <laughs> sorry. sorry no, to cut no you go off. ahead. No, go ahead. I love when they were like, uh, you know, Pat Patterson, he never did anything to those ring boys. You know, they. it was just a gay witch hunt. And then Tony Atlas is like, Pat Patterson, grab my package. <laughs> <laughs> I like he man. just grabbed it. Who am I going to tell? The booker? He is the booker. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell anybody? I'm like, dude, come on. You know what this answer is. That I'll just I'll echo what yeah, you said. Complain to HR. Tony yeah, right. Atlas. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll echo what you said. If you're a wrestling fan, this is a nice little walk down memory lane. When Rock won the title here in St. Louis for the first time, I was there. So, yeah, walk down memory lane, check. You know, Triple H talking about, you know, the curtain call, check, things like that. Yeah, We've they, all talked we, – we know stuff like that. It, it always seems like the curtain call, they talk about it a lot, but it's like – it just doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It, it was to a certain degree because – well, actually, it's a bigger deal because it opens the door for Stone Cold. I'll tell you what, man – they fucking, fucking Bruce Pritchard was sitting there fucking stunned, waiting for WWE to give him a hidden blade. And he was like, I love Vince. He's like, I hate, I thought it sucked. He's like, I thought your two shows sucked. Vince paid for my wife's cancer treatments. They gave her four years to live. That was 24 years ago. You guys need to show the human side of Vince. And that's like two days later. <laughs> and right? It's like all the text messages came out. Right? Like, Man, you better shut the they fuck just, up They hung him out the dry. Okay. They're like, you're going to tell me my documentary sucks on camera? This is what I'm going to do to you. Right. That's the only thing that if, if there was anything that I missed or wanted to see, better choice of words, it's, you know, what's, what it, what we're missing between the time filming ended and present Listen, time? It could have been twenty episodes for all I cared. I would have watched it, but I would have watched an entire sixty minutes on Katie Vick. <laughs> I really would have. <laughs> I thought it was fucking incredible. Now, listen, I understand why Murray said it was boring. Like that makes no, sense I to me. I, I can see that too. I didn't think it was it, boring. Here's the thing about Netflix: is that. Everybody has Netflix, and Netflix, like, has so many more subscribers than even the next closest. Like, Netflix is a big fucking deal. And when they put on a documentary like that, like, the guy that made this Vince documentary made Tiger King. Do you remember how many people watched Tiger King? That shit he also watched. A, he also made American Movie 25 years ago. If you've never seen American Movie, it is fucking hilarious. Just one of the funniest documentaries of all time. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I thought it was incredible. I'm recommending it to a lot of people yeah, it, and being like, I just want you to know that there was other stuff going on that wasn't Vince-related. I, I wasn't calling Stephanie a slut. At least I don't think I was. Uh, the other thing is Vince, uh, I mean, there were so many things, so many things. But when it shows all that stuff together, Vince talks about proposing the storyline where he impregnates Stephanie and Stephanie damn. won't talk about it. Um that is the sign of a fucked up person. I loved the New York Times critic or the New York Post critic who 
feels like he sees Vince for exactly what he is and always has and always been like, what the after, fuck from, are you guys talking about? From the steroids to uh, to present day, you're talking about it's that like, guy. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you know, sorry to our Trump listeners, but it's kind of the way I see people that like Trump. It's like, do you see how fucking stupid this guy is? Like, he pronounced it Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's one of the dumbest motherfuckers. To ever walk the oh face of the God. earth? Oh, Jesus! I I'm mean, when, when they were there. like, when they were like, oh, he was he was perfect, he was perfect uh, in pro wrestling, and then he became president. It's like, yeah, it's the same thing, right? And they showed it perfectly, yes. just beautifully. Cut. Yes, yeah, that would, I totally forgot about that. They, when Trump was on, it, it really felt like not not much has changed. The person, the person. I saw on WWE TV is pretty much the same guy I see on, you know, CNN, ABC, or whatever the case may be. Not much has changed. So if, the fact that if you'd have told me right then when they were talking about, you know, the bow of bow the billionaires that this, this motherfucker right here is going to be the president someday, I'd have laughed in your motherfucking face. I'll tell you what, if you would have put Vince, if you would have asked me then who's more likely to be president, I would have said Vince McMahon. <sighs> That's Between those two? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I would have said Vince McMahon. I would have said Umaga. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know they're not electing somebody as black as Bobby Lashley. <laughs> not did yeah, they wouldn't. You, I don't think they would now <laughs> no, either. Say, no. <laughs> they have a white mom. <laughs> we'll bring out his sisters. Maybe they can get him some votes. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> it's the truth, man. No, I, 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 overall, I did like the doc. I won't call it boring. It's just, for, like I said, for guys like us that watch the shit on a regular, it, it was a nice I was, me- I was watching. I watched the entire thing with my wife, and she knows more than the average person because of- By osmosis. Yeah, by osmosis. Um, but she was riveted, and then she was absolutely disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> just- that- Absolutely disgusted. And I was like, you know, there were other things going on that wasn't just Vince ramming his tongue down women's throats and making Trish Stras bark like a dog. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> so much You shit. know, Vince tried to buy it back. What, the documentary? Yeah, like, that two, makes sense. like two weeks ago. He was like, I'm going to buy it from you because he did not want it to come out. Of course. Out. <laughs> Listen, man, that is not, it's not a hatchet job. No. To uh, put... What has been recorded? Yeah, none, none of that shit was out of context. No, listen, if listen, Vince chose Vince chose the context a long time ago. The context is there's blurry lines between reality and kayfabe, and he blurred those lines a long time ago. And now he's being judged on it because there is shoot stuff that happened that there was always evidence of. Agreed. And not only was he not punished for it, he was fucking made a billionaire because of it. Agreed. I was going to say, I love the fact he was talking about, you know, WCW trying to put him out of business, but then he put the local promoters out of business beforehand and took their town. I'm like, dude, you ain't shit. <laughs> God damn. As, as our friends Jones once said, he's Walt Disney for the scum of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff Jones. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so much to talk about, and I'm sure we'll talk about it next week because I know that Zach uh, will have a lot to get up his chest too. But that's going to do it for our three count. One, two, three. All right, Jason. Some odds and ends before we get to the uh, predictions. Uh, let's talk NXT. Uh, they had their first debut show on the CW and apparently did some monster numbers. Uh, did they? I didn't see that. One of their highest rated shows since October 2023. Um, uh, like a 146% increase between the demographics of 20... It's You can go see the numbers for yourself. It's, it was a huge deal. It felt like a big deal. It. And this is no disrespect to Full Sail. I like the Full Sail crowd. They get invested all the time, but this felt like a borderline pay-per-view PLE type of show. Chicago was invested right from the start. Let's just run down the show real quick. Uh, Julia versus Roxanne. Roxanne retains the NXT women's title with an assist from the returning Cora Jade. 
Didn't expect Cora J coming. I thought this was a slam dunk for Julia, to be perfectly honest. I just assumed she was going to take the title, move Roxanne up. But I don't have a problem with this. I like Cora J as a heel. They're teasing about the getting her and Roxanne back together. I'm sure you saw of more Cora J and Roxanne than I did. That was probably during my NXT. They kind of have the same character. I'm, and I'll, ultimately, I figured that they're you know they're going to have a, some sort of beef for the title. They were kind of beefing for the title before Cora Jade got hurt. Now, kind of surprising to see Cora Jade help Roxanne. We'll see what happens there. Um, other matches, just we'll just go down the matches really quick. Wesley defeats um, Zachary Wentz in a street fight. Wild match. I, I thought this was a really good match. Kudos to both guys here. Uh, Zach Wentz uh, missed that table. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I know what you were trying to do. You weren't even trying to do you. <laughs> Failed miserably. Yeah. He missed that table. I was I literally got off the couch. I was like, oh my God, that shit looks like it hurts. No, he missed it by a lot, too. Oh, yeah. Not didn't even, even close. close. <laughs> not even close. He just shot straight over that motherfucker. God bless That's that a dude. big bump. Oh, that looked brutal. I was like, good thing. It's a good thing he does that a lot because hopefully his body's just used to it. But yeah, that was not the the spot I was expecting. Uh Fallon Henley and JC Jane defeat. Loa Vice and Jada Parker. Jada Parker leaves Loa Vice to the Wolves as she thinks J- uh, Loa Vice is trying to attack her a second time. Um, Post match, Kalani Jordan and uh, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill clear out Fatal Influence. They'll have a six man tag next week. Uh, that is what it is, but whatever. No big deal. Main event, obviously, Trick Williams and Ethan Page for the NXT Championship with CM Punk as the special referee. Trick Williams regains the NXT title. Bit of surprise here for me personally. I liked uh, Ethan Page as a champ, but um, I guess this is a second try for Trick. Maybe they can get him over a second time. I I honestly thought Ethan Page should have won. That's just me. I mean, my first thought after that main event is welcome to network TV where there is no overrun. Like uh, that felt the, the main event felt rushed. The very ending felt rushed. It didn't feel like Trick got to bask in the glory on television very much. And then CM Punk hit Ethan Page with a GTS that you might have missed if you weren't paying attention because it kind of happened while everything while Trick was celebrating. Um, it looked like they rushed it really bad. I, I don't think they're probably leading to CM Punk, Ethan Page, anything. Um, yeah, I think it was just popping the boys. No, I think it was... T- a, qu- a quick, uh, you know, victory lap for uh, Trick Williams. The show felt quick. I'll say that this was this it was show. A good show. Well, yeah, it was. Don't get me wrong. I'm n- I'm not knocking the show. It just felt like you know. I really liked the Obafemi Tony D'Angelo segment. Obafemi, man, that guy has made a lot of progress over a very very short amount of time. He seems very comfortable. Um, had a good look, cut a good promo. You know, he's he's scary. And um, I don't really hate the story that they're telling with Tony D'Angelo. Now it's kind of fleshed out a little bit that he isn't afraid to admit that, yeah, man, uh, <laughs> this guy, uh, I'll, I feel vulnerable. So um, I'm cool with it. No, it's, it's for 2024, it's a solid storyline for, you know, getting in touch with your feelings and, and all that shit. I'm down for that. I don't give a fuck if it's a, a steal and off. You feel of like you're in touch with your feelings? Not all of them, but there's certain feelings I just don't even want to be touched with. <laughs> certain motherfuckers just need to be set aside. I don't care if this is a a rip off of the realest thing you've ever said. Hey, it's the truth. Um, this is Rocky three yes. or Rocky four. I don't care. They're making it to now where it's a forty looking, year old movie. It's fine. I'm looking at Tony D'Angelo at the end when they're, they're kind of staring each other down. And you can see, at least I think I can see the doubt. I'm like, okay, I still want to see this match play. Who wins out. in Rocky Three? <laughs> I was about to say, about to say which match you talking about, motherfucker? Should have been Clubber Lang both times. Now, nah, still, I still like Rocky Three. It's my favorite. Clubber Lang is just an amazing heel. But another story for another time. Um, I do like Oma Femi. I think his. I'm just trying to figure out how you get the title off of him. Ultimately, I mean, he's getting pushed strong as well he should. But, no, I agree with everything that you said. More, This made me feel like Obafemi is going to be a cornerstone of NXT slash WWE 
for years to come. Yeah. The biggest thing. He's, with, a, he's a little ways away from the main roster, but let him dominate and NXT, NXT for, a, for a couple of years. Fine. Do it, just do it like you deal with Braun Breaker. The biggest thing with uh, WWE is that you have to be able to talk. And getting his reps in now, especially on Miz TV, in a scenario like that, CW's debut show, it was a perfect time to do it, and he did well. Anything else to do about NXT? Uh, sh- Talked about that, 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 that Delta. It was a good show. Had, yeah, Delta had a uh, a vignette towards the end. Uh, she'll be. Uh, Who is Delta? She is. Oh uh, fuck! Uh, woman's wrestler. I think she's from South America. Don't quote me on that. So they got Stephanie Vicker. They got Julia, and they got her. So obviously, the aforementioned Stephanie Vicker. She'll be getting Roxanne next. Uh, after obviously, uh, we talked about that last week. I'll be curious to see if Roxanne can go two for two with these two big names that came outside of WWE into WWE, and now she defeats both. It will really be hard to have her shut up. Delta might be the final uh, boss, if you will. We'll see when that happens. But uh, I thought this was it was a really good NXT, and I thought they they presented it really well for the first time outside of Full Sail in a long, long time. That's going to do for odds and ends. Unless you want to talk about Destruction Kobe, which I did not watch. I did, Any titles change hands? Uh, I didn't. I just watched the main event, honestly, um, just because I wanted to see how Naito looked against Great Okan. It was it was fine. Just you, It's not a scenario. Oh, you that got, was the main event? If I'm not mistaken. Great Okan went over. No. Oh. So, uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Love him, but not so much. All right. We got WWE Bad Blood coming up Saturday night. God, I'm so jealous. I wonder we want to watch this shit live. It is in Atlanta, Georgia, and there are five matches on the card. So, I'm going to go in the order that they put them on. Excuse me. The order that they put them on on Wikipedia. So we have Zach's picks. I didn't even see him. I, I saw him sneak that son bitch in. By so uh, right now, I'm in first place with 165 points. Uh, JCB is right behind me with 165 points. <laughs> Two beers. Zach Pullman's got 161. Bring it up the rear. We only got three months left, and it is tight. It's as tight as it's ever been. True story. Uh, this pay per view actually has. Uh, quite a bit of uh, uncertainty surrounding it. All five of these seems like they could go either way uh, because, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, so we got Punk, Punk McIntyre, <laughs> Hell in a Cell. We have to assume that this is the blow-off match for this uh, feud, which has been one of the two best feuds of the year. Um, seems to be the consensus around here. Uh, who do you have, Jason? Got to think with my head, not the heart, because I have big, big, big with Drew, but it just feels like Punk, his time is limited, so you want to maximize the time that he has. I don't want to do it, but I don't want to do it. I'm picking CM Punk. Zach, Zach also took CM Punk. I... I'm going the other way. I'm nice. taking Drew McIntyre. Nice. Um, I think that CM Punk can absorb a loss Bullshit. better. Um, McIntyre certainly can absorb a loss, but um, McIntyre is not as much of a made guy as CM Punk is. That's just, the, I mean, that's the bottom line. He's Agreed. just been around less time. CM Punk is a huge, 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 huge star. Agreed. Um you know, too much of this feud has been over a bracelet. That's how good this feud is, it has been because <laughs> I'm still into it. Um, I am looking forward to this match, but um, I'm taking McIntyre. I, I really want McIntyre to win. I, like I said, I think he's been uh, a driving force in WWE. His character has evolved. Uh, his social media game is I mean, just... His, the WWE Star of the Year... WWE Wrestler of the Year for me is in between uh, McIntyre and who is the other person I was just thinking of? Uh, 
Gunther. Has Gunther, been. sorry. Yeah, between McIntyre and Gunther. So, um, up next, we have Nia Jax versus Bailey. I will go first here. Um, haven't really thought about this. Probably should have. <laughs> Let's think about this. <laughs> Super Zach Pullman took Nia Jax. Um, I... Too early to put it back on Bailey, but you do have the specter of Tiffany Stratton hanging around. Um, it's the beauty of the money in the bank. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, what I just I just think it's gonna happen. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but Nia Jax, who you got, Jason? Uh, I'm making this my Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week. I'm going with Nia Jax to retain for all the reasons that you said beforehand. Too early for Bailey to get it back. Nia just won it. It's Tiff, too early for Tiffany to cash in. We just started to really tease the bully Nia Jax over Tiffany Stratton. So we got to let that uh, marinate for a little bit so you can get that huge pop when she does cash it in. So, yeah, yeah, you know what? Jax. I'm looking at the rest of the picks, and I'm going to make that my Stone Cold Lip by Vlog of the Week also. Yeah, probably the safest bet. <laughs> probably the safest bet. Like I said, lots of intrigue. Uh, Damian Priest versus Finn Balor in what is truly – some bad blood. Mm. Um, Finn Balor, you could say, has been the guy in the Judgment Day that has benefited the least from Judgment Day. When you look at Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio, uh, even J.D. McDonough has benefited quite a bit from being in this, um, not counting Carlito. Um, Zach has taken Damian Priest. I am taking Finn Balor. I love how you set that up to take Finn Balor. That, that you make all the perfect sense in the world. I cannot uh, agree with you more. more. More and more you talked, Dominic is is probably one of the biggest uh, winners out of Judgment Day. His heel heat is is pretty unrivaled when it comes to WWE and professional wrestling in general. Um, I gotta see it. I got to see it. I'm going to take Damian Priest. I would love to see Finn Balor win this match and extend the feud if you wanted to go that route. I just, I know they're both heavyweight champions past, but Priest is just a little more, you know, recency biased. So that's why I'm going with that. I'll take Damian Priest. Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. And I just realized it probably wasn't fair for me to not tell you who Zach picked in the first one. We should, You should know the same information that I know. Uh, not saying it would change your pick or anything. But uh, Zach has taken Liv Morgan in the Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, me and Zach are... We're, we're off on everything. And uh, that scares me. <laughs> Usually I, that's your boy. Because <laughs> I'm taking Rhea Ripley. Really? Yeah. I, I'm taking Liv Morgan. Um, I know Dominic in the Shark Tank is going to play some sort of factor. I just... Forgot about Dominic in the Shark Tank. I really... I just... I don't think that it's time to take it off of Liv Morgan yet. Um, Rhea is made. You can come back to that at any given point and still have her be champ. I just really, I would be a little surprised, not big surprised, but I would be surprised I mean, if Dominic somehow, some way, didn't help Liv to win this. Then where, does, the title. then where does Rhea go? Who does Rhea feud with next? That's Judgment the, Day can feud with anybody. That's an, that is an interesting question. Uh, there's n not much that I can think of off the top of my head. EO Sky might be some sort of spinoff if you wanted to go that route. Um, I just, honestly, I don't think that there's a good answer to that question off the top of my head because right now the women that are in the Raw side feel like they're in a feud and they're all feuding with each other. There's There hasn't been a thought about whoever is, if Liv wins, who's the next opponent? Kind of more so to my point that I was just getting ready to make. Nobody has been built up to where they're the next ready-made opponent for whoever the winner is. I'm taking Liv just because it's you need to still build her up more. Rhea's made. And then finally we have the Mega Powers, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> That's what Zach put in the text message. The Mega Powers, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns versus the Bloodline 2.0, which is Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa. Zach took the baby faces. I, too, 
am taking the baby faces because I can't see either Cody or Roman. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't see neither, neither Co- Cody nor Roman taking a pin here. Who do you got? I, I, I love the back. That's that's a great call. I'm going to take the, uh, the baby faces too, a.k.a. The, a, the mega powers. It's, if there's going to be the rumor match to Crown Jewel, you got to build to that. Both guys on the same team. Going for the title makes sense. Um, I guess the question is, does Sogo take the pin? Yeah. Ouch. Then that's going to give a lot of the Solo Sokoa doubters, haters. Roman pin. Ouch. Yeah, then that's really going to be an interesting finish. Uh, I don't doubt the bloodline loses. I just, I, I don't know how you have a hard enough time having building Solo Sokoa up as the head of the bloodline. I don't think this is a really good way to help. He's not going to be the head of the bloodline anymore. Yeah. Jacob Fatu is here. Yeah, right, right, right. So, uh, did you see Cody on Pat McAfee today? No. Supposedly, somebody big is coming back this weekend. He Take didn't a say who. <laughs> That's your call. <laughs> Take a layup. That's why you my dog. I mean, who else would it be? The Rock? Brock Lesnar, Rock, or the two. Um, it ain't Brock Lesnar. I don't think it's Brock Lesnar either. I think Brock is probably smart and just hiding out. He's laying low. It is well he should. Um I would be a little surprised if it wasn't The Rock. Hikaleu just doesn't feel like. I heard he was in NXT first and foremost, but even oh if we, really? He, this is what I've read that he's been internally moved to the NXT roster, which would make some sense. I think he's still a little green at certain spots, and jumping throwing him into the bloodline angle might be a little too soon, too much. That's just me. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see The Rock. Uh, yeah, that would be cool if we see The Rock. Um, well, then that kind of makes me want to take the Bloodline 2.0. Got it, though. Um, honestly, if it is Brock Lesnar, it's it's better be quick, and you better have a plan. I mean, this this cannot be. I'm telling you, it's not Brock Lesnar. I don't, I don't think it the, is either. Not, not, not while that documentary is still hot on Netflix. They mentioned him at the end. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, obviously he was uh, one of the people that (laughs) was named. Vince was sending messages to. Yeah, and uh, for multiple reasons. I don't think you need Brock back. Only one of those reasons is probably criminal, though. (laughs) Well, maybe not. I'd say there's probably more than that. You need that good stuff from Peru? (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Um, I'm I'm curious to see who comes back. I just don't think it's a way Brock just... Like I said, probably doesn't need to come back. It's The Rock. It would make the most sense. Hey, everybody. We got some birthdays this week. Oh, shit. John Morrison, Johnny TV, is 45. The man of many nicknames. Chief J. Strongbow, R.I.P., <laughs> would have been yeah. 96. Abyss, who I think is like a backstage guy with uh, WWE now, is mistaken. 51. Linda McMahon. Enjoy that. Uh, enjoy that week, Linda. When the, when the Netflix documentary is out, making your husband of 50-something years look like an absolute fucking psychopath. Yes. Oh, my God. Dude. She's 76. Yeah. Hey, Linda. <laughs> Wiping her fucking tears with golden napkins. No shit. Uh, Zima Ion. Do you know what Zima Ion's name in WWE is? Uh, Joaquin Wild. I I don't know. It's I think that's it. Uh, he is thirty eight. Bruno San Martino nailed it. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, would have been eighty nine. Rhino is forty nine. Aiden English uh, still doing it. Uh, is thirty seven. Matthew the, Waywald. The on, Miz. Uh, the Miz is forty four. Turned the, heel for his birthday. So the Miz and John Morrison are one year apart in the same week. Eddie Guerrero would have been fifty seven. Still, he he'd be out there wrestling. He'd be with AEW, don't you think? Yeah, if he was still around. <laughs> yeah, somehow, some way, he'd be uh, lying, cheating, and stealing on somebody's show. It's and way too entertaining. Steven Richards. Oh. I love Steven Richards. You you had to make that motherfucker last, huh? <laughs> I love right to censor. Fifty three years old. I was like, Steven, who? <laughs> Rabbit fever, 
Hey everybody, we know there's tons of podcasts to listen to, so we appreciate you guys listening to our podcast for Joey O'Farrell, Check. for Lucha Chris, Check. for Murray the Murray Man Murray, Check. for Patriot Pat, for Check. Vice, for Check. Brett Jagger, Check. for Two Beers, Zach Bowman, Check. for Jason Cornelius Bell, I am Bill Beggy. Remember that Black Lives Matter, Check. support your local weed dealers, Check. support your local restaurants. Double check. Give your parents a call. Triple check. Free fucking Palestine. Triple check. And never, ever forget to boo the heels. Boo!